Welcome to another Build Day Live video here at Cohesity. I'm Alistair Cook and I'm joined by my friend John Hildebrand. John, what's your role with Cohesity? Well, this week it's currently listed as principal technologist, but uh, like all good things, check back next week. It might, it might change at these tech companies. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with that? <laughs> so, John, we're going to take a look uh, today. What, what are we going to? What are you going to demonstrate for us today? Since this is a demonstration, right? <laughs> so, uh, Alistair, what we're going to show off today is within the Cohesity platform, we have a component called CloudSpin. Now, this is used for two primary use cases. We call one test and dev. The idea that we can take a a bit of our backup information that's copied to the Cohesity platform use it to instantiate a virtual machine in a public cloud. Also at the same time, it can also be used for the beginning building blocks for disaster recovery, a way to take, again, another virtual machine on premises and convert it so that it can be used in a public cloud construct. So yeah, today what we're gonna show off is um, our source is gonna be a VMware environment and our destination is going to be Microsoft Azure. Now, I should mention that we can go VMware to AWS, and we can also go Hyper-V to Azure as well. So those are the current paths for on-premises to, to cloud. And you do, at the cloud end, you do all the conversion from whatever your, your on-premises hypervisor is to the cloud hypervisor. Correct. So one of the first things we've got to do is obviously we've got to transfer bits. And depending upon which cloud platform, the, the workflow varies a little bit. So say, for instance, AWS. First thing we do, um, you will notice after we, after we move the data over to AWS, it goes into an S3 bucket. It still has the VMDK file extension off the end of it. So we're doing just a direct copy of that, uh, of that VMDK file. Then it runs through all of AWS's APIs for converting it to turn it into an EC2 instance. Now for Microsoft Azure, we actually do a, a pre-conversion of that data because changing things from a VMDK to a VHD file are relatively simple and can be done kind of pre-processed. And then we transfer the VHD uh, file over to, to Azure and then create the virtual machine off of it. Right, and so that's a simpler in-cloud process for, for recovery compared to a, a, a little bit more work at the front end in order to simplify that recovery mm -hmm. process. Yeah, correct, because basically using a little bit of the resources we have available on a Cohesity cluster mm -hmm. to do a couple of these components. I mean, it, it varies depending upon cloud, so you might as well make it as efficient as you can yes. for, for each path you may have to walk. Excellent. Well, let's, let's dive into the demo. Okay. So, um, one of the things that we're looking at right now, this is a vSphere environment that we have available. I currently have the VM that's selected, I, I've given it an easy to find name in the form of C-SPIN uh, for this particular demonstration, but it's a SQL device. So it's a Windows 2016 um, virtual machine and it does have SQL 20, I think 2017 installed on it. And I've used this before for demonstrations because you can then connect to the SQL instance afterward utilizing the management studio and you can point it for one IP address to another and see that you have access to the databases within. So, Right here, this shows that we have the VM in question. So what I'm gonna do is actually, the magic starts to happen when you connect to the Cohesity platform. So switching tabs, uh, through Helios, which I believe has already been explained multiple times, um, our, our cloud aggregator. So I've already connected to one of our physical platforms in our lab, and what we have available here are two things. First thing is a source. I currently have an Azure source that's already been registered. So that's essentially, we have the building blocks, we can talk to the account, get the storage account information, the network information, some of the pertinent things that we need to deploy the VM and create it as the, the cloud object. And I think that's one of the ones, I, one of the things I want to flag in the UI is, is where you see source, it really is just a connection to a place where, where data is stored because it can often be the destination. Correct. Yeah. So it, it, it's a yeah. It's kind of a bi-directional, depending upon yes. some of the some of the sources that we have available here. But at a minimum, the account information has been exchanged, and we can connect. Whether it's read, read, write, that all kind of depends upon the account information that's fed. All right. Now, based off of this, the first thing we do is we have to create a protection job. So uh, the good news is, we don't need to walk through creating the protection job. I've already got one available. Down here at the bottom. Although I currently have it listed as disabled, it's mostly because I was doing some other test components for replication and some other of the features that are available in the platform. But what we've already done is we've created 
So we have a couple of job runs available to us. So, so just to show that whole idea of making backups useful in some capacity. I can go back and use, say, this backup job from the 22nd instead of the most recent, or force a new protection job run and use that immediate use data. The latest data. Yeah, yeah. so I, I have this available to me to, to run this. Now, to initiate a cloud spin, we, we can do it in two locations. You can do it at the, project, uh, at the protection job layer, which also works with the policy engine. When we go through the policy, you can add things like replication, archiving, and cloud spin is one option. So every single time that we run something through a protection job, we can have it cloud spin an object to your public cloud in question. Now in this case, what I'm gonna do for, kind of uh, to show the workflow uh, in a more quicker and more expedient fashion, we also have available within our utility, uh, within the UI here, test dev. So I mentioned test dev is another use yeah. case. So by selecting it, you can see that I've, I've, I've done a few uh, over the course of uh, uh, the time period in question. So I'm gonna select a clone. And we've got multiple different options for cloning with our test dev workflow engine, but the VM specific one is going to be the, the cloud, spin, uh, cloud spin initiation. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna search for our protection job. As you can see, it's going to search. So I have the SQL01 backup. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the job. Reason for that is if there's multiple VMs, maybe I don't wanna look through all of them, just give me the job information and then I can piece through, because you can either select the job or the object in question. So, and that automatically selected the, the object as well. And that's standard user interface if I was doing a recovery on premises or to cloud. It's yes, correct. Yeah you, yeah, you have an option to say if you know the protection job name, mm -hmm. use that and then I can get what I need out of it or if I know specifically the VM name or the database name or yeah. any of those other object names, I can choose it. All right, so as we're going through the user interface, we have our selected object. What we can do here is there's this uh, clone as component. Now it's kind of hard to see to some degree, but there's this little pencil called change I'm gonna click on this because it gives me all the recover points. So based off the job, this one only has two, but if there's 50, 100, 200 recover points, I can then choose. choose the exact time and date of yep. protection. Choose which one I wanna use um, based off that. So I'm just gonna choose the latest. Now I have an option here. I'm gonna rename the clone VM. I, it, this process could also be used to take a, say like a, a VMware environment to other disparate VMware environment at the same time. The reason it gets cloud spin is because it can also do the, uh, the, yeah, the version to it, in this case, Asia. Yeah, yeah, the public cloud information. So what I'm gonna do is give it a prefix. Now the clone location, this is why we showed the sources originally, because now we can select the source out of what we've already registered in the system. So I'm gonna select my Azure subscription. Now, the reason why we wanna make sure when we register that source, we've got the proper permissions and everything else available to it is now we have the specifics of that location. So if this was AWS, we'd have to select like the security group and the, and the, the uh, subnet and yeah, the VPC uh, and those. Yeah, VPC, subnet, the uh, machine type, what uh, failover area, like is it US, uh, US West 1A, B, C, so things like that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my resource group. I've got my tag lab resource group that I wanna deploy this to. Compute, now this gives me an option. I can select what virtual machine type on the public cloud side. So you can see here we've got a lot of like standard under DS1, DS2. Those familiar with Azure will identify these and I haven't quite remembered the, the cross matrix quite yet of how <laughs> many CPUs and memory it's supposed to be. But what I'll do is, we'll do is like a standard A3. Now the storage account, Again, I already have a storage account that's been created. We're gonna call that, it's our tag lab blob. And then we have a container within that, we are, that we've put our, our cloud spin objects. And once we switch over to Azure after this, I'll show that all that does exist out there because this is pulling it through that, uh, through yeah, the credentials. To pull through. Yep, so I have an option uh, to use potentially Azure managed disks or unmanaged disks for the virtual machine. Mm -hmm. That's a, a kind of a personal preference for those depending upon how integrated. What operational processes are. Yeah, how integrated they want to be on the Azure side of the equation. So I'm gonna select my network and my subnets that I have created. And this one's got workloads. Now it says here to leave the clone VMs powered off, but I'm actually gonna tell it to power on. Now, this is gonna begin the process. Um, doesn't look like much from this perspective, but you can see we're at the, where we're running. So uh, like a lot of things on a Cohesity platform, we put the data on a view. Um, 
sometimes, you know, they're, they're mostly, most folks don't get to see, see these things unless it's a little object that shows up, but it's uh, another kind of a file share, in, in, whether it's NFS, SMB, S3, S3 yeah. um, whatever's compatible with, with, the, uh, with the process in question. And actually I can drill into here. So you can see right from there, it says destination view and there's the cohesity, INT, and then a number. So that's a created on the fly view for that virtual machine data to be hydrated to. Now it's, a, it's cloned the VM files. So in this case for Azure, when it says it's cloned the VM files, it's already done the conversion from VMDK to VHD, which isn't that intense of a process when you do it from a, from a, from a pre, pre side of the equation. Now, the restored data for a partition queue, this is where now we're likely going to start reading the information, connecting to that Azure blob location, and now we're gonna stream the data over to it. So this is the part that uh, you're, now, you're now at the mercy of the cloud the system and, oh uh, yeah, the speeds and feeds to that public cloud. So, with that being said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually switch over to the Azure account, because I do want to show that all these objects were created out here, and we might even get to see the basis, the first, the, that VHD uh, file, at least initially starting to be written to the blob location. Over here on the Azure side of the equation, um, one of the things I always like to take a look at is that storage account. So down here, remember I said it was tag lab blob. It's, there's a bunch of things happening in, in our account between disks and virtual machines and network security groups, but you can easily identify that, take a click on it, and what we can do is we can look into, so Azure includes something called Storage Explorer. It gives you a chance to look at the uh, objects that are being laid down to um, the blob containers in question. So I have my blob container, so there's Archive and Cloud Spin just like it showed up in the dropdown. So I take a look at Cloud Spin, I can also, if I look at the time, it's currently 1.38 p.m. There's a last modified of a VHD file at 138 at 20 seconds, 30 gig, because that was the size of the virtual machine that I had created. And it looks like complete gibberish for the most part in here, but we can see C-Spin SQL 01. That was the name of the virtual machine. So we've started the streaming of the data over to, over to this blob location in question. Once that process finishes, we'll then start to see a virtual machine be created in that same resource group. And then the final thing, power it on. It's so one thing I should note based off the virtual machines, because I ran into this multiple times, um, a lot of the hypervisor vendors are now starting to create virtual machines and default them to say EFI mode for the BIOS. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the public clouds still do not like EFI mode for the most part. So the one thing to note here, especially with later versions of say VMware and some of the other more modern operating systems, I ran into this and I continue to run into this, keep forgetting, some of the latest hardware versions default Windows 2016 to EFI. So if you're going to want to do certain operating systems, double check that settings. The, the, the public... It's got to be BIOS based. Yes. For the, most. Uh, the, the documentation for, the, for the, the clouds in question that we do the cloud spin to, right from the get-go, you ask the in a frequently asked question, it says, no. No, we're not going to support this. So, so th that they're actually saying this is not even uh, coming soon. This is a... Uh, I, uh, I can't speak for, for them, right. but I would state for the most part that whatever hypervisor they may be running behind the scenes may not support, support it, or EFI. there's there's a lot of security information that happens right. for the EFI mode to happen, and to uplift it and transfer it to another location, that's a very, it's, it's a, a, a lot more trust factor to have to hand that off. Right. So right now, to make it easy, if you have anything you want to try to use from a public cloud perspective, probably best to stick with BIOS mode right now. Right. So, now as we head back, it says it's getting close to done. Uh, don't believe it, um, because it, it, in this case, it will stay at 95% for a while. Uh, you know, some, it, again, this is the speeds and feeds portion to it. It at least lets me know from a process perspective that we're now handing this off to the public cloud in question. It says 12 seconds. I've been talking for 12 seconds. It obviously hasn't moved, in that, <laughs> moved in that time. So. But it's now a process that the cohesity layer has less control of. Correct. And what I actually should probably see, if I'm lucky enough, well, if you look at that, there's C-Spin SQL. So the virtual machine has been created off this. So now it's waiting for it to, like all things cloud related, once you hit the button, you have to wait and wait and wait. So now that it's created this, if I go in and look at the virtual machine, it 
should tell me that it is still, well, actually this is handed off to running. So it's waiting for the feedback from it that it can communicate with that so particular. The cohesity side is waiting to see the running it, um, virtual machine. Correct, and you know, like a lot of things, you're not gonna hammer it like every half second with another API request to, yes. to get it. So I'm sure there's probably some determined amount of time yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's stuff in PowerShell. This is where you start <laughs> sleep 30 seconds, and even though it might take two seconds, at least yes. you know it's going to pick it up. Um, so right now, in theory, if this is up and running, well, let me try to, because you know you have to have one of these YOLO type of moments on these things. 10, 96, 100. So in theory, the device is available. So where I have my VDI device, we have VPN tunneling out to that location. So I'm able to connect to that particular virtual machine. Now with any luck, now it still says it's running, but um, obviously the VM's already out there. So what, what's gonna happen with Cloud Spin at this particular point, once this finishes, I do have an option to tear it down because this process does know where it delivered this virtual machine mm -hmm. to. So, well actually now, hey, it says it's finished. Conveniently, there's my tear down clone button. So anything that I've, anything that I've created out there, now if I hit the tear down, it's going to delete that virtual machine and all the associated files uh, available to it. In, in some way, managing that it knows that it, it pushed that, that data resource. out there. And, and that's part of that test dev workflow where you're <laughs> anticipating having a transitory resource that you're gonna tear down when this job is done, and later you're gonna stand up another one and tear that down, and that's, <laughs> that's the way the dev test process works. Yep, correct, and I, I, I've taken these things a couple of steps further with uh, you know, uh, taking an image that you've uh, had using the, essentially the backup pushing it out to a public cloud, and then from there using your uh, a cloud formation template, Terraform, something like that, and then building entire app stacks based off of, say, that one gold master. So instead of having to worry about the gold master from a, from a running in a vCenter perspective, mm -hmm. you take a backup copy of it and use that backup to do it, do it at the same time. Okay. So that's essentially, from our perspective, that's cloud spin. We've taken that virtual machine and we've now made it available as a VM within Azure. And I can take it one step further and click a button and say, uh, go away. I don't need you now. Tear it back down again. Oh. So. Great. Well, that's mobility of a virtual machine copied from on-premises, uh, dev test copy up in the public cloud. We've shared Azure, what are our other options for doing this at the moment? Uh, so like I said, uh, I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but on the off chance uh, um, people are, uh, like myself, uh, sometimes I don't remember because it seems to be changing. But uh, so if your source on-premises is a VMware environment, we can go to both Azure and AWS. Um, I will caution, AWS does take a lot longer to do this process. Um, it's mostly its API, so when you hand it off, it's uh, they don't have a determined SLA, so good luck. Um, and then from an Azure perspective, um, as you can see, it was a very quick copy to, uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say quick, but uh, I've actually seen that take half the time beforehand. So again, cloud speeds and feeds. At the same time, if you have on-premises Hyper-V, whether that's 2012, uh, 2012 or 2016, that can also go to Azure as well. Okay. Well, thank you very much, John, for joining me. All right. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for joining us at Build Day Live at Cohesity. Stay tuned for more great content. <laughs> Done.